nothing but the dog in me. Good evening and welcome to Pound Posse Presents. We're here on this rainy Saturday night, um, wondering when spring's going to arrive. Uh, I guess it's going to be soon. I hope it's going to be soon. It's almost April. It's about time. But uh, neither here nor there. Tonight's show is a little different. I've got the phone lines open, something I don't do very often. You can feel free to call in. Uh, give me a few minutes to get started here, and I would say at about five after or so, if you want to start phone calling, then I'm here, 203-753-7593. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any number of things. Uh, one of the topics that I'd like to hear your opinions on tonight is uh, our dear friend Michael Vick, who is once again in the news. Uh, the New York Jets have uh, brought him on board, and that's an interesting situation because, you know, on the one hand, I know I, it makes me a little ashamed to be a New Yorker, but it makes me proud to be a New Yorker because I have the feeling that uh, they're going to eat him for breakfast, and that's <laughs> fine with me. So I'd like to hear your thoughts about Michael Vick and the Jets. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who think that uh, forgiveness is, you know, the key and he's done his time. Uh, I say guilt lasts forever and he is guilty. So I'd love to hear again your thoughts about that topic. Uh, if you would like to weigh in on the puppy mill situation and how Connecticut is trying to ban the sale of puppy mill dogs in the state, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. If you've got anything else that you would like to talk to me about, uh, I'm willing, game, uh, keep it polite and keep it clean and we're good to roll. Anyway, um, we hit a milestone here tonight, uh, this week rather, on uh, YouTube. We've got over 10,000 views, so I am very proud of that and I thank all of you who have watched on online, who have shared the show. Um, you know, thanks to everyone who's been on the show because obviously that that certainly makes a difference um, you know when you've got people watching a particular uh, rescue or cause or, or guest and I have to say that the, um, the all-time winner of views is of course Juno who you know how could you not want to watch her and find out more about her and I've got a blinking light over my head and it's gonna drive me crazy anyway <laughs> I don't know if you see that speedo, but it's it's like flickering and take yeah, take a picture. It lasts longer. Anyway, yeah, if you want to call in, feel free. And um, like I said, we'll talk about any number of of topics that you might want to bring up. We've got the phone all set up. Um, back on to Michael Vick. Uh, you know, oh look, we have a phone call. Hi, you're on the air. Well, my friend, hopefully I'm the first caller. You are. How could you not be, Dawn? Hi. Oh, my goodness. I've been waiting for this, like, forever. I get to talk to you on air. Yeah, I know. Usually I'm, like, shouting to you in the, in the background from uh, Speedo's show. This is great. I'm so glad you decided to do this. I, I, hoped, I, I hoped you would call in um, because, you know, I know you're always out there, and uh, you mean a lot to me. So I'm glad that oh. you are my first caller tonight. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, I just want to say a couple of things. Okay. I, I love you. You know that. I, I love you, too. Oh, you're, you're a stellar person. Thank you. Thank you. Um, second of all, I have a, a saying that I can't say about Michael Vick on TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, actually, a couple of things. And, yes, I hope they do eat him for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yep. Okay, and as far as puppy mills, you have so many sweet, beautiful souls out there in towns and everything, and uh, just don't do it. All yeah. I say is just don't do it. Yeah, you know? the old they saying is cute, don't stop you know, the dog. Uh, you know, how much is that, that little doggy in the window, but you don't know his little background and what he came from and everything. Go to the shelters, go to the towns, the main societies, whatever you have to do. Amen. I'm with you. Don't shop, adopt. That's right. That's right. Because for every puppy that you buy, there's, um, you know, there's another dog dying in a shelter. 
you know, it's so sad. And really people is. don't realize, you know, I had a conversation with somebody at work last night, um, and by the time I was through, he was just about covering his ears and starting to cry because he didn't want to hear anymore. Uh, he actually made the truth. statement. Oh, I like to hear the truth. Yeah, no, well, he made the statement, I don't see the problem with buying dogs from a pet store. And, you know, it was a tr it was honestly, he didn't know. Right, so, and a lot of people don't know. That's why there's doggy angels like you that are out <laughs> there that will inform people and educate people. And, you know, they have to take your word for it. You're, you've been in a long time, and you're such an advocate, and you're not stupid, and, you know, they just really have to listen to you. Well, I, I appreciate your, your, your kind words. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have been around the block a couple of times, and um, you know, they don't have to take my word for it. All you have to do is go online, and you can look up the truth. If you think I'm, you know, just a crazy redheaded dog lady who <laughs> lives, breathes, walks, and talks this stuff. Exactly, research it. You know, and and that's unfortunately too many people don't take the time to research things. You know, they they like to live in their little bubble, mm -hmm. and they don't let the truth in. Right, exactly. But uh, then these thank, people, thank goodness, like, thank goodness, we all have you um, to, you know, shed a little light. And like you say, if they you don't know, take your word for it, you know, research it. Yeah, well, you know, I try to do my best, Dawn. You know, like I said, I live, breathe, walk, talk, eat, sleep, <laughs> um, you know, the animals. You and sure do. And every chance I get, I, I will jump in to try to educate and to try to enlighten. And it's not because, you know, I, I try to, you know, be like on my, you know, my high horse or anything. But the more you can educate people, uh, you know, the better off the whole situation is. Exactly. And, uh, you know, and even you do it even in your everyday life. You're a vegetarian. Yeah. So, you know... You know, you cannot knock a person for, for that at all. You know, you just believe in everything that you do. Like you say, you live, breathe, eat, everything, you yeah. know. And, you know, and I, there are ways that I can be better with that, too. You know, um, I would love to be able to get to the point where I can eliminate dairy from my diet because that's a whole nother ball game. Right. That's octo-vegetarian, -veg isn't it? It's, vegetarian it's, Well, actually, it's veganism. Oh, okay. A vegetarian doesn't eat meat, and a vegan does no dairy products as well. Oh, okay. And there's see, a, so oh, I'm not even that educated, so see, there you go. <laughs> taught you something new tonight, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad I called, and I'm so glad you had your lines open. You know, I don't and do it often, as you know, um, but tonight uh, I just I figured, you know, I would stir things up a little bit, and hopefully, and uh, see if people would really call in. And I did. Yay, I'm so glad you did. Yes, I'm the first one, yay. <laughs> yay, you probably, you, for all I know, you're going to be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know, so I better, you know, be quiet now and hang up and let other people have a chance. <laughs> well, you know, that you have the floor right now, so that's up to you. No, so I'm going to let you go. Hopefully, people will call in, because I know Pound Posse Presents on, on Facebook and everything, you know, and on YouTube, you know, people are there, so just call in. Yeah, exactly. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hon. Well, All right, Don. Thanks. Love you. I love you. I'll catch you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was one of my favorite ladies, uh, Don, who is a faithful watcher, a good friend, and um, probably the first lady of Sky 13. <laughs> she certainly watches this show, and I know she watches um, Speedo's show at 8 o'clock and always calls in and it is nice to talk to her because usually I'm sitting where Speedo's sitting over there on the sidelines and I'm shouting to, to Dawn on the phone. Uh, but you know, it's nice to have people who watch to listen and watch to learn. Like I said, I'm not trying to be like on my high horse. Uh, yeah, I get up on the soapbox every now and then, but uh, you know, I, I have enough to offer that uh, I can enlighten other people and that gives me pleasure because it, it, it puts people more on the same wavelength. It, it, it equals the playing field, so to speak. And, you know, again, education is key. If you live in your happy little bubble about animal abuse and, and things that, that happen and the puppy mills and, you know, any, anything else that we can cover here, 
you know, you're allowing yourself to, to, to be ignorant. And whether it's willful ignorance or innocent ignorance, um, because there is a difference. You know, if you willfully don't want to hear the truth, uh, that makes you one kind of person. But if you really don't know, like the gentleman at work last night that I work with had no idea. Uh, he honestly said to me, and this is a person I've had many intelligent conversations with, so I know he wasn't just, you know, being st stupid about it. Um, he was like, I don't see the reason. I don't see the problem. So we had a nice conversation, and we have another call. We have another call. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Hi, lower your TV because it's going to cause a problem. Hello? Yes. How are you? Good. Who's this? Um, I'm Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. What's on your mind tonight? Oh, no. I just, I just wanted to call in because I have three puppies and I really care for them. And, you know, I feel sad for the puppies and the dogs that are in the shelter. Well, that's a good thing. What kind of dogs do you have? I have um, two chihuahuas, and I don't know the other kind of dog. It's black, and it's like fluffy, like a poodle mix or something. Okay, cool. Did you adopt them? Yeah, I adopted one of my chihuahuas and um, and one of my um, the black dogs. Good for you. Did you want to say hi to anybody tonight? Yeah, I would like to say a hi to my aunt. Hello? Yes? Who would you like to say hi to? I'm sorry. I would like to say hi, hi to my aunt, um, Pauline. Okay, say hi to her. Hi, Auntie. <laughs> Does she have dogs too? No, she doesn't because she can't have them in her apartment. Oh. Some people can't, but you have you have three. That's really cool, and you adopted two of them. You said, "Yeah, that's awesome." Well, okay, bye. Bye. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. So, anyway, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people who who are aware. Um, this caller actually, you know, adopted two of her dogs, which, you know, is commendable. Um, I think that adoption is the way to go in, in, in the respect of whether you're going to, you know, go to a breeder or go to a pet store. We know how I feel about that. Um, but definitely, if you adopt a, a dog, you're saving a life. And you're not just saving one life, you're saving two lives because it's the life that you took in and it's the next dog that has room to come into the shelter. So keep that in mind when um, you know, you're looking for a pet. Anyway, where was I? Um, I was talking about being educated and keeping an open mind. And um, you know, I think it is important to learn all you can. Uh, the world needs people to be the voice of animals. Um, you know, the more you know, the better you can speak on behalf of them, and the better off you can make the lives of, of shelter animals, of you know, farm animals, of animals in laboratories that are subjected to experiments. And we have another call. Hi, you're on the air. Hello? Or not. If that was a bad connection, try again. <laughs> anyway, um, I'd love someone to weigh in on um, how they feel about Michael Vick. Uh, as I said, he's now playing for the New York Giants, and there's you know people who are going to be really upset about that. And you know, that's a hot topic because even after all these years, there's a lot of people who defend him, and there's a lot of people who still feel like I do that, you know, guilt is for life. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's a thing where sports fans are more forgiving than animal advocates. 
Uh, I don't know if it's just a, 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 a morality thing. You know, some people feel like Michael Vick did his time and, you know, he should be free of, of whatever stigma that, that is, still, is still attached to him for so many of us. Um, I personally feel that, you know, he did a lot of harm and I think that his, uh, his, his apologies and, and his, you know, repentance is, is very much staged so that he can have the lifestyle that he was accustomed to through playing football. You know, he tried to, you know, he has PR people that, you know, strategically tried to uh, make him look like the good guy. So, you know, you've got the apologies and you've got the affiliations with, you know, the animal activists and you've got, you know, the educational talks in schools and whatever else he's trying to do. I don't buy it because I don't feel the man is sorry for what he did. I think he's sorry because he got caught. And I think there's a lot of people who feel the same way that I do, uh, that he's just sorry that he got caught. If he didn't get caught, I'm pretty sure he'd still be up to no good. And there would probably be hundreds more dogs that died, not only at his hands, but through his dog fighting activities. Um, you know, it, it was a lifestyle for him. It was a money maker for him. He showed no compassion for these animals. If you read the, the transcripts of, of what he did, it's unthinkable. And, you know, the fact that he wants to say he's sorry now, you weren't sorry then. I don't know how you can be sorry now. You, you physically hurt and killed dogs with your own hands. You knew what you were doing when you did it. Now you're going to say you're sorry? You know, the people who feel like, oh, he, sh he did his time and he should be forgiven. Uh, I'm going to ask you, quite frankly, would you feel the same way about a rapist? Would you feel the same way about a pedophile? Oh, he did his time, it's okay now? Or would you, would you really have ill feelings towards that person every time that person's name came up. You know, I can't look at Michael Vick's face without just wanting to do bad things. <laughs> um, you know, it really, he really upsets me. And um, I, I just don't buy into the whole he did his time and, you know, he should be, it, it should be over now. I, I can't. He doesn't strike me as a person who is really, really sorry. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, it's Diana. I was calling um, about the Jets signing Michael Vick. Hi, Diana. How are you? Hi, good. Thanks. How are you? Good. Tell us, uh, tell us your thoughts, because I was just talking about Michael Vick, so you picked the perfect time to call. Oh, great. Um, well, I was an average Jets fan for 25 years, and really disappointed that this is the route they chose to go. Um, I know a lot of people think that, you know, he served his time and has been rehabilitated and he's talking the talk and all that. But what he did, it just takes, I really believe, a certain kind of person um, to be able to find pleasure and entertainment in that. And I don't think that's something that you can just change. Oh, um, I agree. So... Yeah, it's really it's disappointing that they decided to do that. Oh, I, I, uh, I, I feel like, you know, I'm not a football fan, but I feel that the loyal fans for the team are, are who feel the same way I do about Michael Vick must be devastated by this. It is. It's so upsetting. And I'm thinking about the money I've spent on, you know, the game ticket and the clothing and every single thing. And that in the end, by putting money into their organization, you know, they're using it to pay this monster all of this money. Um, it, it's terrible. It's yeah. terrible. I, and I can imagine the sense of betrayal that you feel if you've been a fan for so long. Um, you know, it's, it's a whole different ball game, uh, excuse the pun, than um, like when a team brings on a rival uh, player like you know when the Yankees brought on Johnny Damon it was like really weird to be a Yankees fan with like a, a Boston a former Boston yeah. player 
um, this is something far more moral uh, than just signing on a rival team's player. Right. It actually feels like if I was to con continue to support a team that I'm supporting something so much bigger than football now. Um, and we have so many kids that, you know, look up to these people and wear their jerseys, and it's just, it's a really, really terrible example. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I have to tell you that a few years back, uh, I hadn't seen my godson in a while, and he's a football fan, so I was like, oh, who's your favorite player? When he ever said Michael Vick, I almost crashed the car. <laughs> oh, I believe it. I believe it. And, you know, I, I said, you know, a lot of people don't like him, and he did some bad things, and he was aware, but I, I held my tongue because he's a kid, and he's mm. not my kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, I mean, do you have, you have children? I do, I do, and they're well aware. Um, were, they, of, were they Jets fans as well? Like, did they follow in your footsteps? I mean, how are you handling that? No, they have, one's a Giants fan and one is something else, but it's immediately as soon as they um, heard that Michael Vick got signed, they were just, you know, I mean, I think that the majority of people just can't even believe and he's not even that great of a ball player anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, he's not. <laughs> um, but I think that nobody can believe that he keeps on, that the NFL has condoned it, and now you have the, the smaller organization condoning it, um, that the Humane Society has given him, you know, the green flag. It's just there's so much, it's, the story has so many levels that it, it's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. And then every time that, you know, you, you pass a dog and you look at them and it's just to think what those animals have oh, yeah. experienced. It's terrible. There, there, there were a lot of animals that suffered at his hands. Yes. I mean, he, he was responsible with his bare hands to, to, to kill any number of them and to turn around. I mean, how do you say you're sorry for that? You I knew what you were doing. Way. Because either, either you enjoy it or you find something so reprehensible about it. But if you could look at it as any kind of entertainment, even watching somebody else do it, then you're just a different kind of human altogether. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, for the ones that he didn't kill with his bare hands, surely he ordered them to be killed because they didn't perform. Yes. And I really think, um, and as I was saying before your call, that his, his repentance was so finely staged by his public relations people. Yes. Um, and that he's really, he's not sorry for what he did, he's sorry he got caught. That's exactly, he's sorry that he got caught, but it derailed his career. Yeah, it did, but you know, now he's done everything he could to get back into a position uh, to, to live the lifestyle that he was accustomed to beforehand. It's terrible, and, <laughs> it's so yeah, terrible. People, people have bought into it and I mean, I don't know. What, what's your spin? Do you think, like, sports fans are, are more forgiving than animal advocates? And clearly you're both, but your, your, animal, your animal advocacy seems to be the stronger of the two. Yeah. I don't even think it's necessarily animal advocates. Just there's got to be something inside of you that thinks that it's just too disgusting to support. Um, looking at online, you know, the, the jet. Facebook page and it it seems to me that they really alienated a huge portion of their fan base um, by deciding to hire him so it did seem like there was I don't think that sports fans are necessarily more forgiving I, I love the sport and I still watch the sport but I'll have a new team that I'm supporting it won't be anybody that's given um, somebody like Michael Vick a dollar yeah no I, I, I commend you for that you know, I think that he's going to find out that New York is a lot different than um, than where he was. I really hope so. I really hope so because he's had it. He's had it far too easy, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I, I feel bad. I feel bad for the other people on the team that don't have a choice and aren't able to express how they feel because I can't imagine that they're all as accepting of it as they're going to be forced to be. Yeah, I mean, if if people stop going to the games, they're all going to feel it. And it's going to yeah. be because of him. Yeah. Well, hopefully. I mean, I think that's the only way that the message is ever going to get through. It's about the money. Oh, yeah. It definitely is. And, and you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. 
but I think the fact that he's so much closer to home and for you especially you know being on your team for so long um, or the team that you've been a, a, a fan of for so long it, it, it's going to affect a lot of people in different ways now yeah I, I really hope so I really hope that um, you know by enough people turning their back on it that maybe it will make some sort of a difference I can only hope so yeah, okay. especially a team like the Jets. <laughs> yeah. We still have the same fan base that the Patriots or, you know, other teams have. So it seems crazy that they alienated a lot of us. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It, it, mm -hmm. it will certainly play out and um, and be something to watch. Yeah, it will. But thank you for covering it on your show. Well, thank you for calling in. I really appreciate it. Okay, have a good night. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, Theo. Just wanted to say hello to you. Hey, Nancy. How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling a little better, a little under the weather, so I thought I'd rest, but you know, I, I'm recovering. I'm doing a little better. That's good. I was thinking about the subject of Michael Vick, which I think he's, he's a real sick individual. Oh, yeah. And I think if, if he's to show some repentance, why doesn't he at least take his salary and donate it to, um, you know, to, to a humane society or some of these organizations that, that help the dogs? Well, uh, well, how could somebody take their pet, and I can only think of a dog as a pet, how do you take your pet and, uh, and let it get hurt and fight another dog, you know? Well, oh, your your pets are getting hurt, and they're hurting other people's pets. I mean, how could you think that's okay? Yeah, see, for him, though, it was business, and they weren't, like, you know, the family pet. I mean, he literally had, you know, the kennels, and he had his, his, his little stable, so to speak, of, of fighting animals. And, you know, it, it was all about the money for him. Um, Nancy, I'm getting the wrap-up. Yep. Oh, okay. So thank you so much for calling in. I always love to hear your voice as much as I love to see your face. Oh, I enjoy. I enjoy everything you do. Thank you. And I'm going to say. Um, keep fighting. Thanks. You too. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to say peace, love, and dogs. Thank you very much. Thanks to everyone who called. Have a great week.